Pesach Sobeh. Happy Passover, everyone. Today is the first night of Passover, so I wanted to wish you guys a very happy Passover. Um, of course, so many people are like, Trisha, you're not Jewish. And to that I say, I was not born Jewish, but I tend to gravitate towards Jewish people in my life that have taught me a lot. And there is a myth that not all Jews, some Jews believe in Jesus as the Savior, some don't. Um, I've learned a lot about the Old Testament recently. I know all about Sodom and Gomorrah, and I know all about David and Goliath. Um, I know all about people trying to build, I think it was the Egyptians were trying to build a staircase up to heaven to be greater than God and he had to knock them down. Like there are so many crazy stories in the Old Testament that we were never taught. I grew up Catholic and we were never taught. So I'm like definitely expanding my horizons. Um, you wear a wig to cover your head rather than like a wrap. Um, but basically, Passover is one of the biggest holidays, and it's it's kind of ironic because I have never celebrated this with a Jewish boyfriend or a Jewish person before. I've never been invited to Passover, uh, so I decided to go ahead and make my own Passover dinner. Um, and since it is a um, crisis happening in the world, we are going to do a Zoom Seder. So this is kind of like a Zoom call, except this is not Zoom, this is YouTube, so it's like a YouTube Seder. And I'll be the Seder host, paid as Seder. Um, so yeah, I'm getting the actual dinner ready, um, but we're gonna make matzo balls. Um, I've actually never made matzo balls before. Oh, I was gonna say, but Passover is like actually the biggest holiday. Like it's weird because I celebrated like Hanukkah um, with the people, but I've never celebrated Passover, and it's kind of crazy because like Passover is huge. Like Passover is like, if you guys don't know, Passover is basically the celebration of when the Jews. No, the Israelis were no longer slaves to the Egyptians. So it's not really just a Jewish thing, it's like a freedom thing. So we're gonna go ahead and just try and make this. I don't have all the ingredients. So yeah, there's two separate packets and they said only use one, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, using wet hands, form matzo ball mix into balls into the size of walnuts. Wait, what? Oh, so we're gonna let this, okay, got it. Okay, so we're gonna let this sit for 15 minutes. Okay, cool. All right, so what do we do first? Um, mix two large eggs, three tablespoons of vegetable oils, and the package. Okay. I don't have vegetable oil, but I feel like vanilla may do the trick. Um, it may actually make it a little sweet, so it might be a little like a little sweeter matzo ball. So I'm gonna try this. I didn't think I had this, and I did when I was looking for the vegetable oil. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and crack the eggs. Can you guys see? Okay, so there's a song in Prince of Egypt also called... Mm. Okay, so there's a song in Prince of Egypt called Let My People Go. It was also in the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Carlton sang it. Um, but it's actually a Hebrew song called Go Down Moses. And it's actually a Passover song, but it's kind of poppy and catchy. And it goes... Um, how do I mix this? mix okay I'm also boiling water with a okay anyways it doesn't matter okay so we're gonna put a little bit of this up why is nothing open in my kitchen oh and my hard boiled egg is a boiling that's for later ah, come on out. I'm not really quite sure how I'm gonna mix this I guess like a spoon um okay So um, the song, oof, I, hopefully this tastes good. It's like a cake, I guess, so I'm sure it's fine. It's little, oh, that might have been too much. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put the mix in. That's why we have scissors <laughs> in the kitchen. Okay, so oh, it's kind of like a cake texture. It's like baking a cake kind of, but we have to let it sit for 15 minutes. So we're gonna stir it up. It smells good. I don't know if I've ever had matzo balls. Okay, so we're gonna stir. When Pharaoh was in Egypt land, let my people go. 
They were oppressed, they could not stand. Let my people go. Go down, Moses, way down to Egypt. Tell old Pharaoh, hey, let my people go. Okay, I don't know if that's what it's supposed to look like. It looks kind of small, so we're gonna let that sit for 15 minutes. Okay, so I'm wetting my hands now. Okay, my hands are wet. And now it says to roll into little balls like walnut. So I'm gonna go ahead, I let this sit. And we're gonna just go ahead and make these into little balls. And it says to drop into boiling hot water. So again, my hands are wet. Oh my God, I'm so scared. It's so hot. Oh my gosh, okay. Okay. So we'll put the little balls right here for now. Because I don't know how you're gonna do. Okay. It actually makes quite a bit of matzo ball. Oh my god. Are they too big? My hands are still wet. Just go ahead and take the rest of this. I mean, this is kind of like easy. Kind of like familiar. <laughs> okay. So now that you have your little balls, some bigger than others, which is totally fine. No ball shaming here. That is when we are going to do this little lid thing, which, okay, this is like so complicated. Okay. <gasps> I'm so scared. Okay. <gasps> Woo! Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Woo! Okay. Almost through. Hot water scares me so much. Okay. All right. So now you put the lid on and let them go for 30 minutes. So yeah. Okay. I'm not gonna lie. This smells so good. Like, and they got so big. Look how huge they got. I mean, some of the water is like going down, but they got so big. I'm so excited. So it's got about another 10 minutes left. Okay, so I lowered it to a simmer. It was actually like bubbling a lot and I was supposed to do it to a simmer earlier and I kind of did the whole time. So I think I'm pretty much, um, I think they're pretty much done. So I'm gonna go ahead. They smell delicious. They smell so good. How do you even use tongs? I'm so confused. Okay, one second. How do I use these? <laughs> Wait, what? You guys, these literally don't come apart. I am not even being funny like this, what? How am I supposed to get this out? What the heck? How do tongs work? What? Okay, this is like... Oh, oh, got it, okay. Oh, they're still kind of like soft. I don't know if they're supposed to be soft. Oh man, they're so soft. Okay. Oh, I'm screwing this up. They were. So, I was so proud of this, and I'm gonna screw it all up. Okay. No. My perfect little matzo balls. Okay. I don't know if that's how they're supposed to look, but they look kind of good to me. They smell good, so hot. Burning myself. I mean, I get why people have matzo ball soup because the actual broth that it's like basking in is smelling so good. Okay. So hopefully they're cooked enough. So I guess this is served like as an appetizer. This isn't really part of the 
plate that you're supposed to prepare, but like, you know, Jewish people things, they like the matzos. It's like bread, I guess, like for us, like 4th of July. Because like when Abraham Lincoln freed like our slaves, like we ate bread and celebrated too. So I get it, you know? So Passover is the Jewish holiday or Israeli holiday that basically is the one that's really you need to celebrate with wine, which I am totally down for. So I have my wine glass and I don't know if this is kosher because our Jewish markets were closed, but it's wine. And we're going to pretty much drink it just to symbolize. It's kind of like when you go to church and take the blood of Christ. Like, yeah, it's not really blood. It's like juice. You know what I mean? So it's kind of the same thing. This is going to, we're going to drink four cups or bottles, I don't remember, I'll have to look it up, but um, four cups and each cup um, like represents what God promised when the Israelites were, um, they got like redemption from Egypt. So um, this is my first class. Uh, I will redeem, I will take, I will deliver, I will stand behind. I will bring out. <laughs> I will bring out, I will deliver, I will redeem, and I will take. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now we're gonna prepare the plate. Okay, so first thing we start with is the herbs. Um the herbs represent um like the bitterness bitterness and harshness that the Hebrews endured over in Egypt. So basically like the harshness of the Roman invasion. And those huh, do not smell good. So I totally relate. Oh my God, my matzos are all kind of blending together. It's fine. Okay. So, okay, loud thing. Oh my God, I can't break this crystal. I got the fancy crystals out from Tiffany. So we are gonna go ahead and put this for the harshness and the bitterness that these slaves endured at the hands of the Egyptians. And we're gonna put it right. It's actually like not that bad. Not the treatment of the slaves with the smell of this. I think this is Mora or Chazette. Okay. So now you wanna take another herb aside from the ones you just put. So like that was Charlotte and now you need like Chazaret. And this one is actually going to symbolize the hope and renewal um, for the slaves. And so, yeah, you actually have to dip this in salt water. So one second, actually my filter's right here. We'll filter this water. Okay. And then we'll put that in the middle. And then we have a kosher salt, which I actually just had. I didn't have to go and buy it. I actually just had that. And we're gonna put salt in there. And this is actually representing, like when you dip the herb in there, it's actually representing like the tears and like wiping away the tears. So I think that's a really good thing. So we're gonna just go ahead and put some Chazaret. Gosh, I'm making a mess. We'll put some Chazaret, but we should keep it away from the other herbs so it doesn't get confused. So we'll keep it there. Okay. Okay, next is the only piece of meat that'll be on the plate, and it is the Zero, which is a bone, and it's basically to remember um, the offering, the sacrifice of the lamb. Like, I know, like, in, when we went to Sunday school, we were taught about how, like, they would put the... Is there no bone? Oh, yeah. Um, that they would put, like, blood on the doors to, like, keep it moving, basically. So, you just put this as, like, the sacrifice. And this is kind of representative of that. Okay, then we also have batza, which is um, an egg. It's basically like a roasted egg or a hard-boiled egg in this case. And basically... This is like the first thing that is served to mourners at a funeral. So it's supposed to represent mourning because they also offered an egg at the Temple of Jerusalem um, as like, a, like an offering. 
So you also have to put a little egg on here. I'm just gonna go ahead and peel this real quick. You can also dip this in the water. Um, so yeah, you definitely wanna put this on your cedar plate, um, which we just put right by, we'll put over here since they're kind of the same thing where we'll just like separate them a little bit. So you have, well, you know, we'll put it there for now. Okay, I am mixed up. So this is actually carpus. Parsley is actually carpus. That's the, um, that's the non-torture herb we put on there. This is gonna be the chazaret, which is gonna represent the brick and mud that the Hebrews built. So actually onion and horseradish go with bitter herbs because there was quite a bit of suffering. I think I gotta peel this. Okay, rinsing the onion, and then we're gonna peel it. Okay, so I guess you just need like extra, like not good, like onions are definitely bitter. So you definitely need extra bitter herbs because this wasn't a good time for Israel. Like, I don't even know how you peel this. Oh. So you kind of have to, like the Christians have a saying, like offer it up. And again, not all Jewish people like don't believe in Jesus, but you do offer it up like Jesus would. Um, but this is different. This is Passover. We can do like an Easter one in a few days, but, um, Jesus always, or not Jesus, Elvis always wore the Star of David, and, um, and I guess we'll put the horseradish over here. The Star of David, oh, horseradish. The Star of David and the, um, cross, because he's like, well, I'm going to double my chances of getting into heaven, which is kind of how I feel, because, like, Jewish people believe in the same thing Christians believe in, we just kind of believe in, like, a little extra bit, um, and I think that's okay. Um, and actually I shouldn't say we, because like I said, I'm really into like, I think becoming Jewish doesn't necessarily mean giving up. You know what? Oh, okay. That's fine. We're not going to do this. It's just way too much right now. Um, and I think that's okay. I think it's not really necessarily giving up Jesus to become Jewish. So, okay. The final thing then is, like I said, this is basically symbolizing the pyramids, which is so crazy. I learned about this on the H3H3 H3 podcast that the Israeli Jews built the pyramids, which is crazy, and the Egyptians get all the credit. So we're going to go ahead and put this as the stone that they used to build such wonders. So there is my plate, and now we're going to go eat it. So we'll say a prayer right at the beginning, and then we'll say prayers throughout because there's multiple prayers you have to do, the source of bless blessings and all that stuff like that. So this is the prayer. Baruch Ata Adonai Alami Malach Chalom Shakania Vikia Menu Vachania Lazman Chaza. Praise to you, our God, servant of the universe, for giving us life, for sustaining us, and for enabling us to reach this season. Happy Passover. Okay, so I also found some other prayers for during this COVID 19 season because we are gonna have to do this remote, but we'll just do prayers as we go. So the first thing I'm gonna have is the bitter herbs. I feel like this is something I should probably get out of the way because I don't know how this is gonna taste. Okay. Okay. It's fine. Like, again, I believe in, like, suffering and offering it up, so we'll offer it up. And now we'll dip the onion into the salt water. Mm-hmm. We're into our first prayer, which is a source of blessing. I found this from Reform Judaism. Our lives are in turmoil, our hearts heavy. Help us to cope with this modern plague. We are worried for our families, we are concerned for our communities, and the world is on the break. Bless us with your strength. Which I really like that one. Okay, next we're gonna go with the shaza, which is the brick. And the stone used to build the pyramids. Mm. Mm. That's what I like. Mm. I believe you're supposed to eat the middle matzo ball for the next prayer. 
Let's try these. I haven't tasted mine yet, but let's do the first part first. This is really hot. You can see it's still steaming. Source of mercy. We pray for courage to stay strong for those in our care and for ourselves. We pray for insight to act in loving ways to keep our community safe. Bless us with strength. This is like kind of good actually. Mm. I like the texture of it a lot. It tastes like a biscuit and a muffin. I think the vanilla made it like a little sweeter. Mm. Yeah, it's like pretty good actually. Mm. Wow. This is better than Hanukkah food. For sure. Mazel. Okay. Moving on. Source of hope. We pray for those who are greatest at risk, vulnerable and scared, isolated and lonely, and for those heroes leading on the front lines who keep us alive and fed. Bless us with strength. So for strength, I'm gonna go ahead and um, maybe eat the egg. Oh. And again, like I think exploring like other religions and cultures and the reason they celebrate things and the reason why they are we are. I mean, for one, I mean this is totally different, but Muslims. I. I briefly dated a guy who was a Muslim. And like when I first met him, I was like, there's no way in heck I'm ever gonna date this guy. Like, you always hear such extreme things about Muslims. And there are extreme Muslims, just like there's extreme Christians and extreme Jews. But there's no extreme Buddhists though, which is weird. Um But like learning through him and just becoming more educated and like I just respect everyone's beliefs, like whatever they believe in, I totally respect. And who's to say we're not all right? I mean, maybe we all go to the heaven we believe in. Maybe we all, you know, serve the God we believe in. Because the prayer I'm saying now is on Reform Judaism, but it's really a prayer we all need. Okay, next prayer. Source of life. Throughout history, our people has faced plagues, forced expulsions, slavery, Passover, exile, and extermination. We have walked in narrow places, wandered many deserts, sustain us now, bless us with strength. Well, for strength, I'm definitely gonna have to go with the chicken, because it's protein. Mm. It's actually kind of filling. You're also not supposed to have flour during this time. I think that's pretty much everything, but I feel like I have more prayers to go. And there's so many more. Source of love. We celebrate our fortitude, our shared history, the traditions which have gifted us the DNA, spiritual armor to overcome the modern imprisonment. Bless us with strength. Source of healing. We give thanks for the gifts, sometimes taken for granted. Our homes, our families, friends, communities. We are blessed to connect with technology and computers. May we honor the sharing. Bless us with strength. And then finally, source of courage. Quell our anxiety. Keep us safe. Help us to continue to pray, sing, and study. We see the light of redemption just beyond the horizon. Oh, which I didn't even eat the parsley because parsley is hope. Just beyond the horizon, let us virtually join hands and march together towards the promised man, land blessed with bless us with freedom. Amen. All right, you guys. I hope you guys have a very happy Passover. If you celebrate, if you don't, I hope you learned something from this video. I know I learned a lot throughout making this video and just throughout learning more about Israel and its history. I think it's important to learn every country's history. We are taught us American history and like us Americans are grown to believe like we're the only thing that matters when there's a whole other country that has endured hardships as well. So happy Passover to you all. I love you and I'll see you in the next video.